City Council for Monday, May 4th uh, to order. And um, our first item of business today is correspondence. 2.1, we have a fax from Mr. Sam uh, Mangali from the Travel Lodge Hotel. Councillor Parzal. I'd like to receive this for discussion. Thank you. Second? Councillor Javekov. All in favor? Opposed? If anybody? Carried? Go ahead. Well, the, simple, the themes in this correspondence are very similar to other correspondence, pieces of correspondence that members of council have received. And um, a number of people in the community have talked to me and said, why can't we copy what Goose is doing and so on. And, and I've, I've said, and I've just, you know, you have responded to the all these people in writing to them, but uh, I think it's important to, to, to state that we're talking about apples to oranges in Paris, and we can have Bruce Cookie and Dawson Creek and Tumble Ridge. And I think we should, should uh, use this opportunity to illustrate the, the, the difference. So I, uh, I had a number of questions that I wanted to ask about that. Okay. Purely because I think it's important for every one of us to know the differences, but the taxpayer public should know the differences. Sure. So um, I, I would like to, to admit or himself to uh, outline exactly what Coos did and what it attributed to as, a, as an amount of money and what percentage of that budget did that. Uh, did that count for the point of view of revenue stream. So that's my, my question. All right, so I'll pass that through to administration. I don't know if you guys have the ability to answer that, but I'll throw it over to you. Well, thank you, Your Worship, and through you to uh, Councillor Parslow. We were able to pull some numbers together this morning as we were looking at that and some comparisons. Obviously, I would agree, apples to oranges is the, the comparison. Dawson Creek is a service centre that provides a great deal of the services for residents, not just the Pooscoopy, but the surrounding area as well as people in the city. Uh, tax bases are significantly different. I am going to ask Flavia to uh, just touch on the question a bit. We've looked at some numbers, but a very significant, significant difference. And although people see uh, they've cut taxes by 25% in Puscoopy is the issue. Why can't we do that? Uh, I think it becomes very clear that the amount they've cut from their taxes with the total of 25% is probably less than some of our larger taxpayers pay a single taxpayer, for example. So completely different communities, completely different uh, really structures based on the amount of services we have to deliver, not just for ourselves, but as I said, Puscoopy and the surrounding area. Flavia? Yes, uh, so through your worship, I think w there is a, a series of items that needs to be compared. When we are talking about the total municipal uh, property taxes for Puss Coopers, we are talking about 274000 versus 15.9 million from Dawson Creek. Uh, 71000 out of 273000 represents the business class for Puss Coop, which is 26%. In our case, 51% of the total municipal property tax revenue, which is 8.1 million, comes from business class. Additionally, the total Puss Cooper revenue in municipal tax compared to the total operating revenue represents only 9% out of 2.9 million of revenue. In our case, it represents 32%, which is 15.9 million out of 50 million and that includes PRA. Um, there are other factors also in relation to PUSCOOP is uh, regarding to cash uh, amount that they have in reserve. Uh, they have about 4 million, where we, we have about 11.7 million, but that represents just an example. If you take the number of population of PUSCOOP and compare to the volume of cash is about 4 uh, 4,800 per resident, and if we compare to uh, Dawson Creek, it's less than 1,000. So these are little things that, uh, when compared, we can see how far it's uh, the figures from Puss Coop and Dawson Creek. Thank you. There was a, another statement uh, 
I heard earlier is that uh, they use all their fair share of these goods and record money for operating purposes. Uh, I can't confirm 100%, uh, but uh, yeah, it, it looks like a portion, a portion of that is used, yes. And of course, they, as the Chief Administrative Officer said, they're a full service community. The thing that uh, hurts me somewhat as it relates to Goose Goopy uh, is, is that. Uh, most of those people who use uh, engage in recreation come here for their recreation programs and services. And, uh, we, we have an issue there about uh, funding those things. So, what about Tumbler Ridge? Uh, what, what did you can you share about the situation in Tumbler Ridge? Yeah, so Tumbler Ridge, uh, eight six percent for this year, two thousand twenty two of their municipal tax is actually coming between utility, major industry, and light industry. They did give up 490,000 in revenue from business class. They are granting 100% um, of uh, no, a tax free. However, 490,000 represents only 5% of their total municipal taxes, uh, which is 490,000 is actually a little less than what uh, Consul is granting to business classes uh, on discount of the 5% discount of the meal rate. Uh, they collect about 61% of the revenue does come from uh, municipal taxes, and uh, but they do have equivalent of 18 million free cash to be used and another 9 million reserved. Thank you. Yeah, to that, and I think one of the key issues. <coughs> excuse me. When we hear eighty-six percent of their tax base comes from heavy industry utilities, which would be the wind farm, I'm sure, a light industry, very significant. I mean, you know, when we talk about comparing the comparisons apples to oranges, that in itself will highlight the difference. Eighty-six percent of your tax base being supported really by the coal mines, the wind farm, and the light industry out there. It's Different than the vast majority of municipalities in the province. Thank you. Um, does that? Yep. So, I, I, and I want to speak to uh, Sam's uh, letter. And we did receive two others from uh, Tracy at the uh, George Dawson, as well as from um, Mr. Uh, Chin. I think it is from the lodge. Both, all three, expressing similar concerns. R big, high vacancy rates. Uh, difficult times and no light at the in the future and really worried about uh, the future of their businesses as are we and uh, I've responded to all three of them uh, in writing and tried to lay out some of the differences uh, when you make that comparison Dawson Creek to Pooh Scoop or Dawson Creek to Tumbler Ridge it really is a very difficult comparison to make in terms of where your property taxation uh, assessment is and where your revenue and where your budget is built around the various categories of uh, res uh, assessments and um, and how that then unfolds in terms of the implications of making a, a carte blanche across the board cut into that budget and 25% uh, cut into uh, residential and business taxes for us would be about a four million dollar uh, reduction and so if we it's easy to cut that I think for all of us sitting here, it's easy to say, yeah, we can cut it by 25%. What aren't you doing? And as a service center, we're not going to do the pool. We're not going to do the library. We're not going to do the arenas. We're not going to do the Lakota Center. We're not going to do um, the uh, Calvin Court Performing Arts Center. That would equate to about $4 million. So that's the hard part for us in terms of this. And that's why I think council are moving down the road in terms of trying to be diligent about it and uh, trying to be uh, structured about how and what we've done, but we all appreciate the difficulties that our business community and our residents are in. And uh, this year is gonna be a difficult year and we'll probably be back into this in uh, very quickly in September, October, starting to prepare for the 2021 budget and um, it's gonna be equally difficult. So thank you for that uh, information and um, any other questions from council on the phone? Thank you. Councillor Parslow? Just wondering, you were reading from something. Can we have some of those figures sent out to everybody, council members? 
we could we could pull that here. This is information we pulled together this morning. Sure. Uh, we could pull this. We'll, we'll put it together and get it to council. Thank you. And I have uh, written to the um, all of them and responded to their letter and concerns, and I've passed that back to council and um, administration. Uh, our next item, bylaws, and we have bylaw report number, uh, item 3.1, we have report number 20073 from the Chief Financial Officer regarding our report uh, number 20073, the tax rate bylaw. I would just move that, Your Worship. Thank you, Councillor Wilbur. Second? I'll second that. Councillor Kemp, discussion? Councillor Parswell? Yeah, I, mean, I have a number of... Uh, questions but um, you alluded to that in the statement that we will have to be getting back to this uh, budget business pretty quickly. Um, so we have a balanced uh, budget with these tax rates and um, so just to refresh my memory, um, we have achieved a balanced budget um, by as a result of these layoffs of 70 odd Place. What were some of the other things that had to happen to, or that have enabled us to have a balanced budget with uh, a lower tax rate than was originally planned? Well, uh, through your worship, I will direct to Flavia here shortly, but there's a number of things. We have laid, uh, presently, we have 75 employees laid off. We're just in the process of bringing back about 10 or 11 of those to do some sim summer work. Uh, Hopefully, we'll see the return of all of our employees sooner rather than later, but a lot is going to dictate, be dictated as to how the COVID uh, pandemic unfolds and what we hear from the province later this week. Um, we are going to have to uh, make some challenging decisions on the go-forward basis uh, to get through this, but it's about a million dollars is the amount of revenue we're talking about. Some will be saved through the uh, cost reductions through the staff, but Flavia, I will ask you, to go over the others and we've got this put together so. yes uh, we did have some savings in contract that was projected uh, different contracts uh, that we know by default on first quarter there are some savings uh, others we are working towards like in Canada and tourism so reflections are considering uh, but the main portion was uh, really the layoffs that offset the the, the savings and just to conclude, based on the work we're doing on some of the contract savings, hopefully, that we can realize as a result of things not operating and so on, we hope to be able to meet the one, not one million dollars that is put forward under these reductions here today that we're hoping is Thank you. So, so then, linked, yeah. linked to this, uh, given the uncertainty of tax revenue, because of the hardships that people are facing. Uh, I know that our budget is not <laughs> all the time, but we'll obviously have to be as a council uh, further engaged in it. Uh, we, rather than borrowing money, we may have to uh, make further adjustments in our budget as the rest of this year. Um, if I can. Yes, go ahead. Use Councillor Parso, Without question, we will probably and most likely see amendments to the existing budget that we have before us today uh, that Council has, has put forward. Uh, just as a result of the what we're facing, we don't know uh, what's going to take place. Certainly July 2nd will be an important date based on the tax collection that we see as far as our cash flow and so on. So I do expect uh, not just for next year's budget, which will start and we'll have those discussions, but I do see future discussions taking place as a result of what's going on in this year's budget as well. Yeah, absolutely. I think the whole aspect of the school district tax is where we can carry that, but if we don't get enough to carry uh, forward in our surplus, then having to pay the RD, the regional hospital district, the um, all of those, that uh, that's going to have us have some discussions in, in, I would assume, in early July, August. That what that implications of our cash flow will be. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, so, so I'd like just now like to look at the average homeowner. With the 
revenue tax rate is before council, what will be the uh, taxes paid by the average home? Um, the average home this year went down uh, in assessed value. Last year, 2019, it was 253000 This year, our average home is 241000 uh, Implementing a zero increase uh, this year versus the 4.5% council had proposed will save the average homeowner $67.47 based on mun that's the municipal portion. There are some other savings. I believe the regional hospital district went down some. Uh, overall, it would be about $116 uh, if you include everything. But the municipal portion of which we're responsible for would be $67.47. And for the average business owner? The average business owner based on the rate that we had proposed and now going to not only zero but a 5% uh, reduction as well to help them. Uh, if I've done my math and Flavia will correct me if I'm wrong, I believe you're looking. The average assessed commercial value this year went up from 487000 to 518000 I'll use those are round numbers. Um, but they will save $635.86 based on the 5% reduction uh, that's proposed. So not only, and I say that, we had a 2% increase for 2020 proposed in the budget. This is 5% decrease from 2019's rates as well as how we've applied this. So a substantial difference this year. But again, having said that, the, the discussion, although this year is important, future years are going to be difficult, uh, but we'll deal with those as they come forward. And then the province is not 75% of the school taxes off commercial as well. Yes. I'm just... Yep, just ours. Okay. Portion, portion. <laughs> Anything, Flavia, to add on that? Or? No, that's... Okay. Okay. Thank you. What this, you just mentioned the 5% reduction. What about the 2% elevation that's been taken? We did not put that on the direction of council is to go with a zero increase for all oh yes uh, and plus an additional five percent reduction for the commercial that would be that right so the question is the original tax rate yes. for business was a four percent two two percent four for residential four point one for residential, for residential. so yeah. i'm saying what is the combined effect of this resolution of not just the, the 5% reduction, but also the 2% that was taken off. Surely for more than just, you just gave the 5% reduction. Yes, on this year's, which was the 635. So would it be so say two fifths of mm -hmm. 600? 635 with the B is the 2%, yeah. Yes, so that is the 5 plus the yeah. 2. Oh, that is the two. Okay. from the base of 29. That's the that's part. <laughs> and that's an average assessment of 518. 518.388.68. Thank you. Further questions? And this motion is the first three readings. Ready for the question? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Councillor Javetkov, Councillor Parslow opposed. And uh, option and now recommendation number two that the tax rate bylaw 4441 2020 be adopted. So moved. Councillor Wilbur, second. I second your worship. Councillor Earl, discussion? Ready for the question? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Councillor uh, Javakov, Councillor Parzlo opposed. Thank you. And uh, 3.2 now we have report, <coughs> excuse me, 20074 from the Chief Financial Officer regarding the Alternative Municipal Tax Collection Scheme Bylaw 4442 for consideration of first three readings and adoption. I'll move that motion, Your Worship. Thank you, Councillor Earl. Second? Councillor Wilbur, discussion. You guys are very savvy. Yeah, it's get, we're picking up some uh, feedback on the uh, speaker, I'm sorry. Um, I'll read the recommendation just uh, for the public that the report number 20074 from the Chief Financial Officer in the Ar Ar Alternative Municipal Tax Collection Scheme Bylaw be received further that the alternative municipal tax collection scheme bylaw number 4442 2020 be given first three readings. Discussion? 
Ready for the question? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. And uh, re recommendation number two that the alternative municipal tax collection scheme bylaw 4442 2020 be adopted. Okay. Move Councillor Kemp. Second. All second. Councillor Earl. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Thank you. Uh, Mayor's business. Um, I really don't have anything uh, in, in this uh, today. We really address the issue in the correspondence from the hoteliers and the business community. Uh, I've spent uh, a bit of time the last little bit reaching out to our industry folks in the region, uh, both the chief operating officers of a number of the industry folks to indicate how significant uh, the issue is for our community and getting um, our community back in and the business back to work. and. Um, so we'll continue that message with them and continue to work with them to find the ways that how we can get the community back to work. But always, I think in today's world, obviously the protocol around public health and the protocols with the chief medical health officer as they unfold, that we will continue to proactively develop the opportunities for our community and the service uh, industry and our retail and our business community. So. Uh, that's it today, and uh, we'll continue to keep council updated on what we're working with. Councillor Parzal. Yeah, go ahead. So one of the concerns which I've raised before um, relates to communicating uh, what's what's going on in the point of view of taxes. Uh, you've written a letter to three people, and it's an excellent piece of correspondence. It's to the point. It's not too long. Uh, but I'm wondering if we need to talk about homeowner. Are we are we going to send out something to our taxpaying public about the explaining the first of all this second bylaw about the alternatives, the advantages and disadvantages of it, and also uh, the problem that will face homeowners if they do not pay their taxes vis-a-vis -vis the homeowners' rent. Okay. Sorry to be late. Yeah, no, that's a good point. I and have, I have uh, been trying to explain some things to people in a variety of, in a variety of circumstances, and I think it's a, we need to tell the story simply so that uh, we can understand. Perhaps what we'll do is we'll um, go to work on uh, bringing somebody back to council as we now bring the adoption of the budget forward and the message around the key components of the budget and uh, the components around the penalty and explaining that and explaining the implications of the budget and put a communication piece together that we put on uh, our website, our social media, as well as uh, with the mail outs on our tax rolls. And I know that we do that normally. We have a bit of a thing, but we'll bring that back in our next council meeting, and I'll go to work on that with the administration. We'll come up with a communication plan for taxes and budget for 2020. We should too include the reports of homeowners and tax obligations. That whole component of the lending is good information that we should be, as Councilor Park has indicated, telling that information to residents and businesses out for you. Do you want that? By, we, we need a, a motion to direct that, or uh, yeah. Yes, that would be cleaner. So, if we have a motion to direct uh, administration to bring back the communication plan on the budget for uh, 2020, Councillor Parkle, second Councillor Jebekov, discussion. All those in favor? Opposed? Here. Thank you, everybody. Motion to adjourn. Go ahead, Lark. You wish to. possibly maybe homeless in our communities or other communities. Other communities have set up some access to uh, outside washrooms, for example, and wash stations. Um, we haven't done that yet. We've had a request if we would consider it. It looks as though this cost is covered through emergency services in British Columbia, so it would be our intent to get those out as quickly as possible, put them down by the Kin Arena uh, in that area, close enough to the downtown core. Uh, couple of um, quarter bodies, something that they had to do to the, all of our public buildings being closed, but that's what people were accessing before.
before, but I wanted to raise that in case there was any discussion from council on that. Um, we are in the process. We placed it out, uh, and it appears emergency operations will cover that. But uh, I wanted to bring that to your Good. Attention. Thank you. Any questions for council? Thank you, Blair. Um, motion to adjourn. Councillor Parslow, Councillor Javakov, all in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for calling in.